first off, I just want to shout out Josh and the team this morning. You guys did awesome. It was amazing. You know, God is moving. I don't believe I have to say that like people don't know. By the way, brother and sister, God is moving. In case you missed it. The sad part is sometimes we miss it. God is moving in this place. I'm trying to look at everybody and your little eyeballs. Thank you, Nate. Make it very easy. <laughs> God is moving in this place. God is doing miracles. We don't sing these songs for like the someday. We don't sing these songs in anticipation like one day God is going to do a miracle. God is doing miracles now. God is doing the miraculous in front of our eyes. You hear me? I'm going to shout out Kim in the back. Stand up. Raise your hand. Come on. Let me, let me, tell, you, let me tell you just briefly. This is, now this, this is like I start to shake. A week ago, she couldn't get up to get herself to the bathroom. I know she doesn't mind me sharing these things. It breaks my heart because we have been praying and standing and warring and praying and fasting and praying. Let me tell you what, she's healed. Come on, you got to be better. You got to be bigger than that. She's healed in this place this morning. She is healed. Isn't it so fitting that God would do that in the midst of by faith? Like, wow, what a coincidence. I think uh, a few, few times back, I don't remember when it was, uh, something I had mentioned in, in speaking. If you want to see coincidence, pray more. I was praying and all of a sudden... What a coincidence. God did something. You want to see coincidence in your life? Pray more. This morning, I'm excited, if you haven't noticed. Second, second most. I said first and foremost. So this will be second and next most. Um, Pastor Doug sends his love. He was like, you guys get after it. You guys do it, make it happen. I'm so glad to be a part of a place where um, we get to do this. We get to do this. We get to be a part of the move of God in this area. This is not just for me at my house. This is not for you at your house. This is for us, for this area, for the buter, buter, <laughs> for buter. <laughs> well, boys, this is for buter. Buter and Kyle. For Buta and Kyle and South Austin and North San Marcos and all of the surrounding rep. Shout out dripping. Woo woo. Uh, <laughs> Driftwood, my bad. Close enough. Bass drop is represented. Uh, but God is moving in this region. God is pouring his spirit out and changing what this area looks like. And he's doing it through people. Every one of you have a story now of a healing of a miracle that's taken place. I kid you not, this week was one of those weeks where you know when God gives you a word and it's like, I got the word for the week. Pastor Doug said, can you preach? Yeah, I can do that. I'm ready. He's like, we're doing faith. Okay, I'm ready. He told me three weeks ago, a month ago, something like that. And my, my kind of thought process, and I've, I've said this before, is I begin to run a constant monologue of the things that pop into my head on what I want to speak about concerning the subject that I've been given or whatever. Amen. And so, like this monologue of faith, what is faith? How does faith operate? Where is my faith? Am I, am, I, am I just faith on the outside? Am I faith on the inside? Is my faith evident? Because there's my faith, 
And then there's like having faith. There's like, oh yeah, I have faith for that. And then it's like, oh no, this is my faith. And, and they're kind of two different things. And so in the midst of all this, I've been having like some back pain. And then all of a sudden, like Thursday, Thursday morning, <clears throat> I start having some throat issues, and my ears start clogging up, and it's like, this is in, like, this is right before Sunday, and so it's like all of this stuff, I'm, I'm, I've whittled down the monologue to something that'll fit in this time period mostly, and uh, it's like, God, I know that you have a word. God, I know that you have a word. I know that you have a word. I've got this word inside of me. It's eating me up. It's eating me up. And my body's like, we ain't going. All of the parts that could break down, we're going to try and break down this week. <laughs> There's a little bit of stubbornness still in there. It's like, oh, no, it ain't. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. There's other things I want to say, but nope. You're not going to stop me. Like I, I, I'm, I'm standing, I'm standing working one day and my knee just buckled. Ah, my leg. <laughs> like for no reason. It was like, were you lifting something heavy? I was just standing. <laughs> the, the rest of the day is like, what is the deal? I don't know. Did you scream? No, because my throat hurt. <laughs> uh -oh. When I went to scream, it hurt my back. But it's contention over a word that God has put on my heart for us this morning. Faith, how do we move? How do we operate? How do we function? The world has made faith this puny, wishy-washy substance. The world has made our faith something we have to apologize for. Where everybody else can stand and declare, I am a they, or a it, or a whatever, or I can represent this, or I can stand for that, we have to apologize for our faith. I'm sorry, I just don't do those things, because I'm a Christian, and I, I just... I can't be a part of that. Why do we have to apologize? Why, has, why have we allowed the world to make our God small? And I say we. It's never a y'all. It's a we. Believe me, I told you. I've been going through it this week. I actually called Pastor Doug on Thursday. Hey, sometime can we preach on something that's like kind of easy? So when we go through it during the week, it'll be like, oh, yeah, that's good. I preached on eating seconds. <laughs> I got it. You don't get this big only eating firsts. <laughs> like if we could preach on going back or a buffet, I'm in. I got it. I got it down. But my faith was being stretched this week. And I thought... And this wasn't, don't get me wrong, this is not like a, like a higher than or oh, I'm so spiritual. I thought I did pretty well faith-wise. It's like my job and different things. I know, I know that I know inside my heart, inside my spirit, inside my mind, that Legacy Church is the place I belong. There is nothing any one of you could tell me that will shake that faith that I'm exactly where I am supposed to be. It's like, it's, it's firm, it's rooted, it's deep. You can't move me. God himself will have to move me. And he'll have to move me through my leadership and everybody else because this is where I'm supposed to be. The same thing with my job. And I, told, I got offered like four different jobs before I went to this new job. And all four before that, I was like, God is not moving me. And I will not move until I am moved. If God's not moving me, I'm not going. Because it's a waste of time, and then I have to just go back to where I was. Because that's where God stayed in the place that he had me. You put yourself in a place where you suffer. 
because you moved before time or you didn't listen. I say this from experience, trust me. I've moved a bunch of places that I shouldn't have moved. But this word is inside of me, and I'm like, I'm pretty good with faith. I'm staying firm. I'm supposed to be here. And then out of all places, and it's not even super related to what, what, what I'm talking about this morning, but it's like I, I begin to listen to some other different snippets of people talking about faith. And Steve Harvey, yes, I know, Mr. Mr. Family Feud, uh, had a thing, and he's talking about faith, and he's talking about prayer. And he said, he said, do, when was the last time you asked God for something? Because he's talking about faith. He's talking about you have not because you ask not. And again, this is not the direction, but I'm giving you some background on where I've been this week. He said, he said, when is the last time you really asked God for something? Or has your request become dependent on the size of your pocketbook? And it shook me. Like, I'm at work, I'm standing by my truck, and it shook me. Because I couldn't remember really asking God for something bigger than I couldn't possibly provide on my own. I was just waiting for him to give me permission to get something that I could pay for myself or manage myself or find myself. Not asking above and beyond. And I began to see it's like God wasn't working on the stuff, on the material things. He was working on the value of me to me. That I didn't ask because I felt that I still didn't deserve. And we've talked about freedom. Freedom is so stinking important. If you have any opportunity, and you will, get in freedom, be a part of freedom, do freedom, and then do freedom again, and then do freedom again. I'm like 12 freedoms deep, and God is speaking to me while I'm thinking about faith on my value as a person. And my value wrapped up on what I'm able to ask for. So I began to ask. All right, God. I got a list now. And I'm waiting. And I'm praying. And I'm seeking. And there's a, there's a level of expectation that I'm going to see these things come to pass. Why? Because if he'll do it for her, That same God, if he'll do it for her, he'll do it for me. So in the midst of all of this stuff, I'm like, oh, God, oh, my goodness. And I get out of my truck, running around. I'm telling you, the devil has been, the devil drives a school bus sometimes. And the devil in this school bus tried to run my daughter off the road and popped two of the tires on the side of the car, and I had to leave work to go make sure that she was okay, and the car's okay, and everything else, and it's money that I didn't have to spend on tires that I wasn't prepared to buy right before Christmas, and so then from there, everybody's okay, then I'm running to go to the bank to make sure I can put some money in the bank so that I have money to buy the tires, and my faith is being tested that God has the best for me that I think and I get out of the car to go into the bank, and I walk two cars down, and there's Kim standing in front of me. She's been sick. She's been in bed. She's been not able to move. She hasn't been answering her phone. Nothing has been happening. She's been down, and she's standing in front of me. She goes, hey, I'm healed. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And I said, okay, if you want to punch me in the face with, with faith, I'm ready. I'll pay for nine tires. Because God that can heal and put in front of me, put your faith in me, because I can do things that you would never believe. I could take care of some tires, son. 
All right. This is all the intro. I haven't even made it to my notes yet. I'm fired up on what God is doing, and he's building my faith in the process of everyday life. Everyday life. Faith on display. Faith on display. Sadly, it's not just the world that is bent faith. It's the church as well. The church has made faith a blanket statement and a powerless word for wishing. Just have faith, brother. What does that mean? You're not helping me. God, I've got this, and I've got that, and I need this, and I need that, and this is broken, and my family's dysfunctional, my kids are running around like chicken with the head cut off, and tires are popping, and everything's going around. Just have faith, brother. That doesn't help me. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be any of those things. Give me something that'll help me. Don't give me a blanket statement that you don't even know what it means. It just sounds Christian. Just have faith. How? How do I just have it? You can't find it at Target. I checked. They don't have it at Walmart. They don't have it in the shoe aisle. I went to a lot of shoe aisles. They don't have it there. They don't have it where jewelry's at. I like jewelry. I checked. There's some stuff that has faith, but trust me, that ain't it. How? How do I just have it? Pastor Doug talked a little last week, and he, he, he brought this, this scripture up. I was all pumped up. I was like, yeah, you tell it. And then I was like, whoa, slow down. Leave me something to tell. Because he jumped right into kind of where I, was, where I was wanting to head. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, it says this. It says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And he said, faith is a substance. And I love this. Faith is tangible. Kim can stand. Everybody see Kim back there? Substance that God is moving and operating. It says, for by this, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. In other words, when God spoke, things became. He spoke the world or the worlds, the universe, the galaxy into existence. Through faith, we understand that. We understand that what he says has only one outcome. It will happen. If you don't get nothing else, what he says will happen. Now, we as human beings have to do our part. Faith without works is dead. Faith alone will get you faith alone. We have to do our part. We have to walk out our part. We have to do the things that he's calling us, that he's asking us to do. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, if we back up a little bit, if we go to Hebrews 10, the very end of Hebrews 10, it says this. It says, now the just, that's behaving according to what is morally right and fair. That's just. I behave in a way that is morally right and fair. Now the just shall live by faith. So we shall live by a substance That's evidence of the power of God. Get this though. 
It says, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Where is our faith? How deep is your faith? I, I'd, like to use, I'd like to use this word uh, in conjunction with faith. Because if I ask the church in general, do you have faith that God will do what he says he's going to do? Everyone will say yes. That's just like the Sunday school answer is always Jesus. Who did that? It's Jesus. Good. Yes, that's always a Sunday school answer. It doesn't matter even what the question is. How many commandments are there? Jesus. Close enough. <laughs> yes, that's right. But I'm going to use this word with faith, and I'm going to substitute faith for trust. So now if I ask you, do you trust God to do everything he says he's going to do? Some people are going to second guess. Some people are going to look at their circumstances. Some people are going to look at their upbringing. Some people are going to look at their current life situation. Some people are going to look at all of the places where they feel like maybe God let them down. Maybe things didn't work out. I thought it was going to be this and I thought it was going to be that. And maybe not trust God to do what he says he's going to do. But we are a people that are called to live by faith. To live by faith. So do you trust that God will do all he says he's going to do? I'll give you a moment. I wish that sometimes that you could do that like that. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. What was it Jeopardy? Was that Jeopardy? Yeah. What is? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. What is? Jesus. So how do we how do we do it? How do we get it? How do I just have faith? Is it natural? Does it does it grow? little bit. Faith is grown. Faith is cultivated. The Bible says, uh, Kim and I were actually talking about this other, the other day. It says, with faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Do you know it's not the size of the seed that matters? It's what's contained inside the seed. He could have picked anything small with faith the size of a grain of sand. That's smaller than a mustard seed. In other words, it only takes a little bit of faith, but it's not the how much, it's the what it does. Faith replicates. A seed makes more of itself. Contained within the seed is the ability to reproduce exponentially. That's what our faith is called to do. It's not about the size of the faith. It's what's contained in the faith. What is contained in our faith? How do I build that up? How do I make that stronger? How do I water that mustard seed? How do I fuel that into something that I can live by? Because my goal is to live by faith. That doesn't mean give all of your stuff away and live in a tent and wait for Jesus to show up and bring you hamburgers on the side of the road and not know, have a plan for your life or not. It doesn't mean any of that. I'm living by faith. Dude, you don't have like your stuff together. You're just wandering around blindly. That's not what living by faith means. It means a trust and a belief that God can do and will do everything that he says he can and will do. Not only in my life, but in your life, in this world, in this region, in this planet where we've been put here. God is here to move. God is here to spread himself through us. We are the conduit for him to move on the earth. Our faith powers 
other faith. My faith Thursday morning was about this big. After I ran into Kim at the store, my faith was this big. And I was ready for whatever showed up after that. Enough to shake me on my insides to reevaluate my value. Yeah, but you, you look like you got it all together. So what? On the inside, sometimes I don't have it all together. Am I the only one? No? This is like that Pastor Doug. If my hand goes up, your hand goes up. You're supposed to do yes? Okay, no. I know I'm not the only one. That even on the best of days, even the most spiritual of people go, man, today is just one of those just having a rough one. Right? Romans 10, 17 says this. Listen, this is important. So then faith comes by hearing. How do I get faith? Well, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Do you want faith? The answer is yes. Do you want faith? Yes. Then hear. And hearing by the word of God. And yes, I, I, I feel like at some point during church, unless you are brand new, if you are brand new, welcome. I'm not Pastor Doug. I'm sure you figured that out. Uh, at some point, it should be okay to say, hey, you, to stop saying, hey, you need to read your Bible. At some point, we should become a mature enough church where we know that we have to pray and we have to read our Bible and we need to worship. We need to come to church. Right? So I'm not going to say if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that you should make sure that you're getting the word of God. I'm not going to say that. I said it wasn't, so I'm not. So what am I hearing? What is God speaking? What is the word in my life? Well, I know just off the top of my head that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That I was knit together in my mother's womb. That before I was ever born, there was a plan and purpose for me set apart for me before I was even thought of by my parents. That's the foundation of what I know. That's the foundation of my faith. That while I was still a sinner, he died for me. That he's the God of miracles. That his plans for me are good and pleasing. That he loves me. If there's nothing else, I could sit in the bubble of God loves me. I could sit there. Because the God who spoke the world into existence loves me. And you. Amen. Amen. Y'all still with me? Yes. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. What's another way? I love this. I'm going I'm to read kind of a, a larger section 
of Scripture, but I, I love I love this part of Scripture. And uh, I don't know, man, some people, I used to be scared of the book of Revelation. So I was like, it's the end of the world, there's dragons and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, ah, don't read Revelation. Uh, but it's called Revelation. A revelation of things to come. Revelation uh, chapter 12 Verses uh, 10 through 12, it says this. It says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows his time is short. If that's not good news, I don't know what it is. The accuser has been cast down. The accuser of us has been cast down. And the world is in such a state because he knows he's running out of time. The end is already written. Because God said it. The end is already decided. But that's not really the part I want to I want to really look at. I want to concentrate on. It says, "And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony." Testimony builds faith. Do you want to know about a God that can heal? Ask him her testimony. Do you want to know about growing up in a fatherless environment. Ask Pastor Abe his testimony. Do you want to know about drug addiction and getting free and delivered a drug addiction? Ask me about my testimony. Do you want to know about living a pure life without any of those other things having gone on? About growing up in a good home Ask my wife about her testimony. Do you want to know there is power in the testimony? Now, when I mention testimony, I have to be careful because we had, um, oh, what was uh, Jesus Loves Austin? He came and spoke. I'm, uh, what, what, Seth. Yeah, Seth Dahl came and he spoke and he had another kind of drug uh, influence testimony and we get to the house and I'm asking all my kids especially the boys what y'all think that was good they're like yeah we just need to do drugs for about a month <laughs> and then we need to drink this and do that I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa why he's like because we need a testimony I was like time out <laughs> you, you going about this all the wrong way you don't need you don't have to have that testimony Living a pure life, living a holy life, not going through those struggles is testimony all its own. I wish I, that my testimony was that, and I didn't make all of the turns that I made and have to have God redeem my life to make it a testimony. But I'm going to tell you this too, you don't get a testimony without a test, just in case you want to know. And it is a test to live pure. It is a test to live holy. It is a test to go through addiction. It is a test to go through broken home. Now let me doctor this statement a little bit. God did not break your home. God did not let somebody abuse you. God did not make me a drug addict for his glory. God did not inflict Kim with sickness for his glory. 
God does not do the, he doesn't need me to be a drug addict for him to get glory. He doesn't need, I could have been a whole bunch of other things and stood up here and be just as powerful, just as moving, just as spirit-filled, just as faith-filled, just as much a Christian as I am now without that. Because it's the God in me. Not those things. But those things have power because I know if God can deliver me, he can deliver you. If God can heal Kim, he can heal you. If God can be a father to the fatherless, he can be a father to you. If God can fix my marriage, he can fix yours. If God can fix my kids, he can fix yours. There is not a limit to what God can do. But I need to hear the testimony. Sometimes I need to hear my own to remind myself. Jason, remember where you've been. Remember who you are. Simba. Sometimes I need to remember who I am. That doesn't sound bad, but or good. I need to remember who I am. That God made me, he designed me, he put me in this place on purpose. He allowed me and encouraged me to walk through. He put people around me. He showed up miraculously and delivered me from drugs. It's another one of those things. I don't care what you say. You cannot shake my faith in the God of deliverance. There's nothing you could tell me because I remember that side and I know this side. You cannot shake that faith from sickness to health. You cannot shake the faith of an outstanding father who grew up fatherless. You can't do it. Where is your faith? What is your testimony? What do you need to hear? Where do you need power to overcome? Man, I struggle. I struggle with fatherlessness. I struggle with abandonment. I struggle with not feeling like I'm good enough. I struggle with not thinking I matter. I struggle with not believing that I'm good enough. But God says I am more than a conqueror. That I'm a son. I'm an heir. I'm a priest. I'm a friend. And the words and actions of those around me prove that his word is true. And when they can't, like my brother prayed earlier, when they can't, when people fail, he does not. All of the trials, all of the struggle, all of the, the, the things that we go through, my God has never failed me. Not once, not yet, not ever. Never. And he never will. So what is your story? Where has God built testimony in you to build faith in others? To have faith on display, you should have known me then. You should have seen me then. I tell my kids that, but only about sports stuff. You should have seen me back then. Shoot.
That was harder to see back then because I was a lot smaller. Not a lot smaller, but easy, Ben. What is your story? What is your testimony? How are you building faith? I want, I want faith in my life so I can live by faith. I want to hear. I want faith to come by hearing. I need to hear. That's why, Pastor Doug, it's not an accident. It's not like cliche church. Tell somebody. Invite a friend. Bring somebody. Post something. Share something. You are spreading faith. You are building faith. You are changing people's lives with a click of a button, with a word out of your mouth, with a story that you live by on how God has enabled you and allowed you to overcome circumstances and deficiencies and blah, 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 fill in the blank. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I've got to get my Bible in me. And I've got to hear other people's story. I've got to hear the testimony. I need to know how Robbie and Donise are winning. I need to know how Jerry and Dolores are winning. I need to know how Paul and Courtney are winning. I need to know how Dana and Sam are winning. I need to know how Kat and Caroline are winning. Because it builds my faith. I can tell you a lot of faith about being a drug addict, but maybe I can't tell you a lot of faith about some other things. But let me, let me clear this up. Faith translates. Faith is not, is not stuck in a box of, I can only have faith for deliverance. I don't know about healing, but I've been delivered. So I have my deliverance faith. Faith will cover it all. It doesn't matter. Because if God will deliver me and God will heal her and God will heal him and God will move in her life and God will move in his life, God will move in your life and God will move in your life, why won't he? Why won't he? Amen? Amen. So here's what we're going to do a little different. I'm going to have Kim come up. And uh, Josh, you can, you can play if you want. If you don't, it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to have Kim come up. I'm going to have Pastor Abe come up. I'm going to have uh, Josiah come up. I'm going to have Jen come up. Uh, These are just a few stories. If you need faith for healing, come and hear Kim's story. If you need faith in your family life, fatherless, abandonment, those kind of things. If you need faith for your family, come and talk to Pastor Abe. If you need financial faith, I want you to come and talk to Josiah. I want you to hear his story. How God took him from managing Dollar Tree or Dollar Mart or Dollar World, whatever. God took him from managing dollars to managing dollars. Come talk to Josiah. If you want to talk about kids, if you want to talk about good family life, and you just need some help, and I, I just want to stay pure, I want to stay wholesome, I want to stay, then come talk to my wife. Come talk to Jen and hear her story of our our our. Our growing up was polar opposites from 
divorced homes to no divorce and different family lives. And she can tell you that side of the story. I can't. I saw it on the Brady Bunch. I thought it was weird. But come and talk to her. And we're just, this is our response for today. Because when I asked at the very beginning, who needs more faith? Everybody raised their hand. Or at least you should have. At least you needed to. We all need it. Find somebody. Find somebody and hear a story. Find somebody and get prayed for. Find somebody to talk to. Find somebody to share your story with. There's stories in here that I don't know yet that I need. Ralph and Heather, you guys have a story. I don't know what it is, but you guys have a story. Y'all inspire me to want to know you more so I can hear your story. I'm ready for it. Share your story. Sam and Dana, y'all's story is amazing. I love it. We've got brand new stories starting. Couple stories. Y'all are beginning your story together. It's awesome. Share your story. Amen? Father God, I just thank you for what you're doing in this place. God, I thank you for moving in our midst. God, I thank you that you've poured yourself out, that you're speaking to us this morning, God. God, and I ask that you would continue to just move in this place. God, build our faith. God, build our stories. Amen and amen.